Guys, ready to dive in? Ready. Y'all are ready. Wow. So this is where we're gonna start. Yeah. Uh, um. Man, we don't pray so much, and and uh. All right. Let me kind of give you guys a, just a little quick recap. Yeah. Um, where we at? We are in the book of Ruth. I'm gonna tie some things in for you. Um, some really interesting things. Good to see you, big fish, cow. Uh, um, tie some things in for you. Remember, we can get right back to where we was. We start off. Um, there was a great famine in Israel, right? Yes. yes. So Emlek and Naomi and their two sons, Malhon and Halion, C H I L I O N, Halion. They had left because of a great famine, and they went into the land of the, of Moab. While they was there, Emlek, whose name means "My God is King," died. Right. So also did Naomi's two sons. Right. Mahalon, which means sickness. And Halion, C-H-I-L-O-N, which means penning. They had both died, and while they were there in Moab, both the sons, after the father had died, married Moabite women, right? One was Orpah, and one was Ruth. Wasn't that really against the Lord? To we're going to get into that. Oh, okay. We're going to get into that. That's going to tie into what we're going into. So... Um, so now they had left because there was a great famine and it was uh, it was about 10 years they was actually in Moab and uh, now Naomi which it's believed to be she lost uh, her two sons uh, in a war um, you know scholars believe it could be a possibility that Mahalon was sick and he died because his name means sickness um, but it's believed more that there was a war because it was a great time of famine and battles going on and both her sons had died in a war. So now uh, Naomi is there with two uh, daughters-in-law, you know, you, you know, through the law they become a daughter, you know, that's how the law works. And she tells them to go back to her family, I told you guys. Well, one says, you know, I'm not going any, well, both of them say, we're not going anywhere. And then when she said, no, you need to go so you can find a husband or whatever it is. Um, so Orpa says, okay. She kisses her mother and goes back to, you know, her family. Um, and then Ruth said, you know, your people is my people. Where you go, I'll go. Your culture is mine. Your language is mine. You know, God forbid that, you know, I go anywhere. I'm going to go wherever you go. Okay? So um, Naomi had heard in chapter 1 that there was corn. I say corn, but it's actually barley. Is Israel is now, you know, there's, it's time of the harvest and there's food. So now they're coming out of it. So now uh, Naomi's going back and Ruth's going with her. Okay. First thing I wanted to tell you guys is that at the end of chapter 1, uh, I'm going to go back and read the, first, the, the last couple of verses before we go into the rest. Um, this is absolutely amazing. First thing uh, I'm going to tell you guys is we know that the Word of God, the whole entire 66 books, is all about Jesus. Amen. That's what it's about. So every shadow or foreshadow that's in there, it's all about Christ. So we know that this whole story, Ruth and her name, you know, meaning, uh, you know, uh, did I say uh, her name was a um, uh, a helpmeet, you know, uh, a friend, whatever it is. That's what her name means. I had it pinned up on a board or wrote up on a board. Um, it, it, she is a Gentile Moabite. She is going to be symbolic to the Gentiles, a Gentile bride. And she, you know, happens to go in a man whose field she's working in is by the name of Boaz. And we know that Boaz is the kinsman's redeemer. So we know so far that Naomi, she comes back in and, you know, after 10 years, you know, 10 is a number of the law, 
you know, they come back into Bethlehem. That's another thing. Remember, Joseph had to bring, go back to take the census back in Bethlehem, right? That's where Mary and all of that. So Joseph was a Benjamite. And here it is, uh, Naomi's husband, Elamech. You know, his name means, my God is king. He was a Benjamite, just like David was a Benjamite. So all of these pictures, he's a picture of Christ. They hear that there's bread back in Bethlehem, which Bethlehem means the house of bread. You know, now Naomi, she went out full, meaning she had a husband and two sons. But now, and her, her name, Naomi, means delightful or pleasant. So she is a delightful and pleasant woman who has been blessed by God to have a husband and two sons. And now through a great famine and possibly a war, she's lost her husband and her two sons. She hears now that there's corn or, or there's food back in the land, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in Benjamin. So she's going back to her people. Okay? And that's what we're going to pick up. First thing we're going to take notice of that it's about a marriage. The Kenvin's Redeemer, Mary and Ruth. But also in the process, uh, Naomi, who is a, a Jew, is also going to be redeemed at the same time. So they're redeemed both at the same time. Ruth is redeemed as well as Naomi. The Jew and the Gentile being redeemed by the same person, the kinsman's redeemer. Yes? The, there's two books in the Bible named after women. That's and Ruth. Ruth. Mm -hmm. One, the Jew marries a Gentile, and the Gentile marries a Jew. That's right. And Ruth is the eighth book in the Bible, which is that number new beginnings. That's right. And the thing that, that amazed me is that it says, and now it came to pass, not five times. Right, right. And it always says it's a bad beginning with a happy ending. Right. And also, you know, uh, she brings up a point to let you know also this is the time of the judges. So the kings hadn't come forth yet. So you know that here a marriage is partaken, is, is happening between the kinsman's redeemer and Ruth during the time of the judges. Well, the marriage takes place when Yeshua, the bridegroom, returns and he rules and reigns for a thousand years as the judge of the universe. So, I mean, there's so much that's buried that we're going to get into. We're going to open some doors. I'm going to get into who could possibly be the nearest kinsman, you know, and all of that. So, you guys ready? ready. All right. Ruth chapter 1. We're caught up. I'm going to start in verse 19. Ruth and Naomi returns to Bethlehem. All right. Let's see. So, they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them and they said, Is this Naomi? Meaning my delight. Is this my delight? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi. Call me Mera, which means bitter. For the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. So she's blaming God for what happened. Okay? But the blame is really not on God. The only reason there was a famine in the land of, of Bethlehem and Israel is because they had left God. And Deuteronomy says, if you do this, then I will do this. But if you don't do this, then curses is going to come upon you. So Israel had rebelled. Okay? This is a picture of the end time. This is a picture of when Yeshua is going to return for His bride. Okay? So you can put yourself in the place of Ruth. Right? You understand that? Because this book is about, you're going to see it's about the end time. It says, and she said, verse 21, I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me uh, Naomi, meaning my delight, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? Well, number one, the Word of God testifies against them because they wasn't doing what they were supposed to do. The land was, you know, uh, the land was uh, in, uh, in famine because they wasn't being obedient to God. Apply that to your own life. If you're not obedient to God, your land, your body will be in famine. You understand that? And you'll go around begging your whole life, right? Um, the other thing... Um, I noticed here is that uh, 
Naomi's two sons, Mahalon and Hilion, Hi, hi, H, C, H, I, which there's no C, H in the Hebrew. So it's H, lion, L, I, O, N, lion. So it's H, lion. Um, they both married uh, Gentiles, which was against the law. They was not to go in any other land and marry a Gentile. So that was wrong. Right? So they was doing contrary to what the law had said. Living during the time of the judges. Right? And that's yeah. God's law? Yep. Yeah, the, yeah, the law came through Moses. And he, he said, don't marry them. When you go into other lands, don't fool with the women because they'll bring you into their customs and cause you to, you know, worship that's false okay. gods. Very, very. Very. You'd be, uh, yeah, you better believe it. You was an outcast. You know, so their offspring, Mahalon and Ruth, if they had an offspring, right? Um, number one, it would have been uh, uh, um, a Samaritan, a half Jew, half Gentile, and they despised. Another thing I want you to notice about this is that, you know, Ruth didn't give birth. She was, you know, she was married but had no children because her womb was closed. She couldn't produce. Wow, we can tie that into women in the Bible, right? Who, there were seven women in the Bible that were barren that we know of. You know, and that, that'll get into another story, which represents the seven candles on the lampstand, which, you know, opens up some, some other stuff. But anyway, so chapter two, let's go. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, uh, when I'm reading, I'm going to replace their name. So, when I'm reading, I'm going to tell you the name, but I'm going to tell you what their name means because it kind of opens some stuff up to you, right? Remember, Ruth left her heritage. She learned the Jewish language, you know? She learned their customs. She learned what they did. She learned from her mother-in-law. And I want to tell you another thing about, um, about Ruth. You know, there was something of integrity that Ruth saw in Naomi. Naomi was an upstanding woman, a virtuous woman, to where Ruth saw something in her and wanted to cling to that. That's why, you know, she was married to a man's name who means pinning, to pin, to be nailed to, and that's what she did, right? You understand what I'm saying? Meaning, her husband's name means to pin, to pin something onto. And it says that, Na that Ruth clung to, pinned herself to, where Orpah went back to her own family. Right? So there was something in Naomi that Ruth saw that she desired. Remember, watch this. Ruth was raised in a Gentile home, but married into a Jewish home and saw how they operated in their customs and, and all of these things which, you know, in which they did. So there was something there that she desired that she clung to. All right? So, and Naomi had a kinsman, a near kinsman, of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Emlech, whose name means my God is king. Right? Yeah. Um, whose name was Boaz, meaning strength. So Naomi's husband had a near kinsman, a cousin, or, you know, like a first cousin, or the brother of someone that was, you know, whose name means, his name, Emlech name, my God is king, who had a near kinsman whose name means strength. Naomi's husband had a near kinsman. It's not Naomi's. It's her husband's. And Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. Wow, right? And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. Now, let me tell you this. Here Naomi has been gone for 10 years. She sold her birthright. Emlech sold what he had 
right, to someone else, they left their homeland, sold their land and their possessions and everything they had, and moved away. So when Naomi comes back, she doesn't have nothing. She has no land, no property, no house. She doesn't have a way to feed herself. Why? Because she doesn't have sons. She doesn't have husband. She doesn't have anything. So when she comes back, you know, she's coming back in disgrace. What is she going to do now? Go and glean in the field of, you know, another man? I mean, that's humiliated. She's, being, she's hum in humiliation, right? So Naomi, now Ruth... She asks her, her, her mother-in-law, mother-in-law, let me go because I know you can't go, but according to the law, I can reap the edges of the field. Let me go and you stay here. I'm going to now take care of you. And you know that Naomi represents the law of God. Naomi, right? She represents the law. You understand that with me? Okay. Well, we're going to open this thing up, you guys. And Ruth the Moabitess uh, said unto Naomi, Let me go to the field and glean some ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went. So she's looking for grace, right? And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her happen was to light on a part of the field belonging uh, unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Emlech. So probably like his first cousin. That's how close this is. This is near kinsman, right? And behold, Boaz, strength, came from Bethlehem, the house of bread, and said unto the reapers, Yahweh be with you. And they answered him, Yahweh bless thee. It says Lord in the King James, but it's the name Yahweh. Okay? Uh, then said strength unto his servant. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers. Whose, da whose dasmal is this? Now, a dasmal, if you want to know what a dasmal is in the Strong's, a dasmal is, it's the word, it's in the Strong's 5291, it means nera. Whose dasmal is this? Uh, which means a young woman or a girl ranging from the age of from infancy to a young adulthood. By extension, it means to be a servant, a maid, with possibly the focus on a lower social status. Okay? So she's in a land that she doesn't know. She's not familiar with or anything like that. And she just so happens, which in the Bible there's no anything by chance, to come upon Boaz's field and she starts gleaning the edges. Okay? Now we know it says the reapers, and his servant said, verse 6, And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said unto Boaz, It is the Moabitish dasmal that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab, which means seed. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from the morning unto now, that she tarried only a little in the house. Meaning she's in the house right now and she's only there for a little while. I mean, she's been working all day in Boaz's field. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, uh, and Ruth's name means help meet, okay? Then said Boaz, strength unto Ruth, hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens, my servants. So now he's taken them, ta now Boaz has taken Ruth underneath his wing and telling her, look, don't go glean in other fields. Don't be gleaning in my field and then you in another man's field over there. You know, don't sleep with God and then sleep with idols. You understand? That's what he's talking about. Don't hang on the fence. Don't straddle a fence. Either be on my property or be in their field. That's what he's telling them. You can't, you know, you're either going to be in the world, you know, and of the world, or not of the world and out of the world. Take your part. What are you going to do? Now watch. And he says, and I want you to catch this also, the servants, 
I mean, the reapers had taken notice to what Ruth was doing. And we know biblically the reapers in the Bible in Matthew. Now this is physical reapers, men like you and me. But in Matthew chapter 24, the reapers are the angels who go to gather his elect, right? So this reaper would say, yeah, she's been working in his field. Or yeah, looking at you and me, we've been working in God's field, right? For X amount, you know, we ain't... Let's keep going. I keep throwing you back to showing you it's a picture of the coming of the Lord and His gathering together us unto Him that would be not caught, you know, hanging out in the ballroom and running women and in a church house in God's field. You can't do it. Because when it comes time for the harvest, you're going to be harvested with the wicked and burned. You understand? Number nine. Moab, I found it. Additional definition is called rubbish dump. Right. Wow. Wash pot, pot, and it's Psalm 68. So Psalm 68. Uh -huh. 60, verse 8. Psalm 60, verse 8 um, says that Moab, where where um, Ruth was from, it says that it was a garbage dump there, the which is the world, right? Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you. Number nine, let thine eyes, Boaz says, let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap. Who? His maidens and his servants. And go thou after them. Follow them in what they're doing. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? That means molest you. Wow. So now, she's come under the shadow, the hedge of protection of Boaz. She's just a Gentile Moabite young girl who's out there in the field that, you know, them women get raped all the time out there. He charged his people in the field, you watch over her and don't you set your, don't touch her. Because she's come under, in my field and that's why he says, don't go in any other field, you stay in my field, right? And when thou art athirst, he says, um, go into the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. You know, then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why? Check this out. Watch this. Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? Right? Why are you paying attention to me? Watch this. And Boaz answered and said unto her. So this is why he took knowledge of her. It hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law. Right? This is Israel. This is the mother-in-law represents the word of God. That's what it represents here. Because, how, how is that? Because the law came through Israel. You understand? God has taken, Boaz has taken notice of Ruth because of the way she's treated her mother-in-law who was a Jew, where the Word of God came from, the Jewish people. He's taken notice to, you know, what she's doing. Since it says, uh, uh, And Boaz answered and said, uh, It hath fully been showed unto me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity and art come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore before. Listen, when you leave your family, when you leave the world, and you come into God's field, He takes notice. You need to stay in that field. You forsake all for Him. You forsake your heritage, your customs, your people, and all the things that deal with the world when you come to Jesus Christ. And when you come to Jesus Christ, you learn His ways. Yeah. You learn His Word. You learn you stay in His field. And you go in no other field. And that's when God casts His eye upon you. Yeah. You understand? Right? Yeah. The Lord recompense, meaning the Lord repay thy work. A full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Psalms 36, 7. Hide me under the shadow of the Almighty. 
That's who she's come to trust in, right? So as long as she's in that field, she's going to be okay. But if you get out of the field of God, well, number one, you could be molested. You can be killed. All kind of things can happen to you. Well, Lord, why is this happening to me? Well, where are you at? Yeah. What are you doing? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Are you in other men and women's field? What does that say? And the grass always looks greener on the other side until you get over there. And you find out it's just, you know, crabgrass. Right? And the farmer said, if, it, the, gra if the neighbor's grass looks better than yours, it's because he fertilizes and waters his. You need to do the same to yours. Right? And he says, Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight. Verse 13. Uh, then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me, and for thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaids. So she's not a Jew. And the Bible says there's neither Jew, nor Greek, nor bond, nor free, nor man, nor female, for we're all one in Christ, right? Amen. So it's not of what you've been born under. It's if you've been born again under Jesus Amen. Christ, right? And Boaz said unto her at mealtime, Come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in vinegar. That word vinegar right there is wine. So here we got the bread and wine with Boaz. Wow. Sound like Jesus with the bread and wine, yeah. right? And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her porch corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed and, and left, and there was some left over. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. Now, now, where she was now, you know, gleaning the edges of the field. Now, Boaz said, tells his servant, now, I want you to let her come into the field. Right? right? And, you know, now she's going to follow, listen, now she's going to follow the maidens or the servants of Boaz. And what she sees them do, she'll do. Because, you know, that's why the Bible says uh, older women teach you younger women. We're to be living examples to others. We're not to be... A lot of people leave the Lord because they in church, they serve Jesus and they go home and they beat their wife and get drunk and commit adultery and then they're back in the church again. Yeah. Then it's two fields and it messes people up. Yeah. Right. right? And guess what? The angels who, who are the reapers know who are the children of God who is righteous and who is virtue because it's been given unto them to reap the earth. Yes. Right. And if you're playing in another man's field or following idols, well then guess what? When it comes time for the harvest, you won't be reaped. Amen. To go into God's barn, you'll be reaped and binded in a, bu a bundle and cast into the fire. Right? Right? So God knows how to separate those. Let's see. It says, um, and he said, Reproach or not, 15, verse 16. And let uh, fall also some, he tells his, you know, his reapers, and let fall also some of the handfuls of, uh, for purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glean them and rebuke her not. So she gleaned in the field unto evening, and beat out that which she had gleaned. And it was about an ephah of barley. Now, I want to tell you something about barley. The barley was that, uh, if you ate barley in Israel, you were poor. The wheat is, you know, so barley is a poor, is a poor man's food. They even, you know, fed the animals to barley. You know, Jesus. He, that's what he was raised up on barley. Wow. Pretty amazing, huh? He wasn't raised in a rich man's house. So barley was for the poor. And she took it up and went into the city. And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned.
And she brought forth and gave her that she uh, had reserved after she had was sufficed. Meaning in verse 18, when she sat down and ate with Boaz, and Boaz had fed her, she didn't eat everything on her plate. Right. She had some left over. Right? She swiped that off and wrapped that up and put it away for her mother-in-law. So there you see in the heart of Ruth, she's gleaning the field not only, you know, to get the, the barley, but here it is, she sat down to eat with Boaz. Boaz provides her a plate. She takes half of what she's got that's already been cooked and parched and prepared and ready to eat right. and brings it to her mother-in-law. Yes. Wow. Think about that. That's you and me. The Word of God, it's almost like the Old Covenant is not cooked yet. And they don't know how, you know, they don't understand it or whatever it is, but we receive through Boaz, through Jesus Christ, we receive the meaning and the understanding of the Word. We take that which, which we got and we give it back to the children. Amen. And say, hey, I want to give this. This is who Jesus Amen. is. This is what He means. This is what it's about. You see the heart of Ruth and what she's about, right? Mm. Um, and our mother... And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And where did you work? Blessed be he that did take notice of thee, knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought. She had told her who she was, and said, The man's name with whom I wrought, where I work today, is Boaz, brother. This was like, this is, this is the ultimate revelation to the children of Israel. Because now the one, the one, when she said it was Boaz, I was in his field. All of a sudden, all of a sudden something comes over her. Oh my God, this is my Redeemer. Yeah. This is Israel realizing who Jesus Christ is. This is, he's a near kinsman. Not only, not only, you know, can I seek rest for you, but he can redeem my husband, Imlech. He can redeem him, which would bring me back into the family. Why? Because right now, she's an outcast. She has no one to raise up name for her. She has no more name. Her name is done away with. She has no more sons to raise up seed, to grab the inheritance of her husband, to give her a right to be where she's at. Wow! A revelation. And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord, whom thou ha who has not left off his kindness to the living. Verse 20. And to the dead. To the living and to the dead. To her and Ruth. To her and Emlech. Right? And Naomi said unto her, The man is a near kinsman unto us of our next kinsman. That's a first cousin here. That's first cousin stuff here. Right. Right there. And Ruth the Moabite said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. That right there, if Boaz wouldn't have told her to keep fast by his maidens, by his men, then she wouldn't have been accepted by him. But she was accepted because of all she had done for her mother-in-law. Because, and watch what he says, And Naomi said unto her, Ruth, and Naomi said unto Ruth, 
Hear, daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, that thou uh, go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in another field. Why? Because they will become a testimony against you. How many people get a bad testimony by, you know, over here and then being in places they ought not be? Yeah. Right? Yes. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of the barley harvest. We got into that. And of the wheat harvest. Right? And dwelt with her mother-in-law. Chapter 3. Do you mind if I read a little more? No. What does that mean? You said she stayed away from him? It said, so she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean into the end of the barley harvest and the wheat harvest and dwelt with her mother-in-law. It means she stayed with them. She didn't go in any other field. Right. I didn't know. Did she stay with those, those maid servants? Or? She worked with them in the field. Okay. So now she wasn't gleaning on the edge no more. In the morning she got up. For 50 days, 49 days, the barley harvest, the 50th day is the wheat harvest. This is the time. Listen, this is the time of the harvest, April, May, right? Yes. We know that's the time. This is the time of the marriage. Yeah. This is the time of the harvest. All of this is going down. So she worked from the beginning of the harvest all the way to the end. That means you and I, when we come to work in God's field, look and see, is not the fields ready and ripe for harvest? What are you doing standing here? Remember Jesus said that? Go in the field. Go into my field and work. Gather in the harvest. Because when the time comes for payment, He said... Remember the, the parable, and when he paid the many, uh, paid the man a pence, yeah. he said, "Well, I work in the field, you know, all all day." And this guy just works since you know a couple of hours. You know, he's like, well, "Hey, you know, are you getting mad at me because of my goodness? Yeah. Didn't I agree to pay you a pence, and you're mad at me because I gave this man only worked an hour for uh, the same thing?" You know, but the whole point is that God, the field, is the world. Yeah. The field is the world. And you and I are Ruths. Right. Yeah. How are we Ruths in the world? Well, Ruth's name, what does her name mean? It means a few things. It means friendship. It means help meet. Wow. God laid Adam down to pull a help meet out of his side. Right? God laid Jesus Christ down to pull a bride out of his side. Yeah. Right? Boaz laid down on the threshing floor where the wheat is beat. The threshing floor of Ornan. Remember David when Ornan was in Bethlehem. Where are they at? The threshing floor of Ornan. The very threshing floor that David bought. Ah, son! <laughs> and in order for the bride to come forth, Boaz had to be laid down. Listen, my daughter. Go not unto him till after he's finished eating and drinking. And when he lays down, take notice to the very spot so that you can become a bride. Amen. Ah! Son, take notice to where Jesus Christ died on the threshing floor. Yes. Take notice to that spot and go to his feet. Yes. And ask him to pull his skirt, his covering, his tunic over you. And don't leave his field. Amen. Amen. Because if you do, the angels will testify his reapers against you. I've got a question. Yes. You said the field represents the world. The people. Well, how come she came from the edges of the field and intermingled with the servants, with the reapers of the field? If the field represents the world. The field, the Bible says, Jesus gave forth a parable and he says the, the field is the world. Pray that God, the Lord of the harvest, will send reapers into his field. Because that's what ultimately they became. 
they was reaping the field for the barley harvest. So the field represents the world, right? And the barley and the wheat represent the people on the physical standpoint. So we go into the field and she's working in Boaz's field to gather the, well actually to gather the wheat or the barley, but it spiritually speaks that you and I or Ruth working in God's field because wheat and barley represent people. That's right. And we're to gather in the people. And sometimes, you know, we get to, you know, I guess gather the edges. That's but when, where we start. That's where we start. That's right. But before you know it, God will use you to bring in a harvest. And that's where he says, and some bring in 30, 60, and 100 fold harvest. That has nothing to do with money. It's talking about gathering in the wheat, gathering the sheaves. Joe knows the song. Yeah. Bringing in the sheaves. Bring it in the sheaves. That's right. We all know that one up. When you go into 1 Corinthians chapter 3, when it tells us that we are husbandry, it means to be farmers, to be land workers. That's right. We're, that's right. When she went and laid down at his feet the custom of the day, when a wife got in bed with her husband, they didn't enter like, like we think of a husband and wife sit down on the bed and, you know, getting in the bed together. The wife, if they got beat, at the feet at the foot of the bed, Probably and crawled up his bed, which of course is God. I need to correct my wife. That's what I'm like. That was Tom's yeah. way of asking. <laughs> no! All right, hold on. I, I've opened up a can of worms. <laughs> yeah, we're going to... But that was her way of asking and saying, Mary. That's right. You know, I felt like the Lord wanted me to say this. Um, you know, this is being put on YouTube, and I just felt like, you know, uh, Casey and Hope and Harley and Anna and Court, we love you. Amen. You know, and... Uh, we miss yeah, we miss you guys, and I sent you a text last night and told you don't forget to look at, you know, YouTube, because I know you was interested with Ruth. And um, but anyway, we love you guys. We miss you. We know you're coming home, and uh, yeah, we just safe. yeah be safe. And we just pray that you know God does everything that He needs to do in y'all life. We love y'all, and uh, let's keep going. All right, all right. So um, then Naomi, chapter three. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, um, said unto her, uh, my daughter. Shall I not seek rest for thee? That word rest is, it's actually, it's the word, um, it's the word Manoah. Now what's crazy about that, that was Samson's uh, father's name, Manoah. Remember that? Manoah, right? Now watch this. This is amazing. Now, Manoah, his name means rest which is Noah's name. We find rest in Noah's ark and we know that Noah was a picture of Christ and you know Noah and his family came into the ark where they found rest and she says isn't you know is it uh shall I not seek rest for you? Shall I not seek marriage for thee? That's what it is. It's about being married where we find our rest, our Sabbath rest in Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus. Watch this. That it may be well with thee. So now, th she's taking care of the mother-in-law. Now the mother-in-law is, is seeking marriage for her so that she could find rest. Right? Yeah. But check this out. The mother-in-law has to operate through Ruth. And Ruth needs to learn from the mother-in-law the customs and the ways. Because if she don't learn the customs and the ways of the old covenant, she will miss it. Yes. Yes. She will not know how to approach the kinsman's redeemer. Yes. Whoa, son. That's right. So the teacher is now, you know, uh, who's doing the teaching is now leaning on the one who's being taught um, for provision and, you know, through her, salvation is going to come. 
You see, she, Ruth, became an example unto Naomi as being a virtuous and a righteous woman. So was Naomi a virtuous and righteous woman. You know, a, 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 in the beginning, Ruth saw the virtuous and the righteousness of Naomi, which became an example to Ruth. And Ruth now, following that example, has now become a blessing back to her mother-in-law. Wait till I get toward the end. Oh my God. Oh man. Man. So, I want to show you something that is like amazing. He says, um, he says, uh, now check this out. Now the instruction comes is coming from Naomi, which represents the old covenant. You know what she's got to do. Um, and she says, then Naomi, her, her mother-in-law, said unto her, my daughter. See you, brother. Take care, y'all. Love you, man. Uh, my daughter. Um, then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her. My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? And now, is not Boaz of our kindred, whose, uh, with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. So this is at the end of the harvest. So now, that night, the day before Pentecost, 49 days from the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the 17th day of Nisan, she's been working in the field 7-7, 49 days, and that night, which would be the next day Pentecost, which is the marriage, that night, the mother-in-law gives her instructions. Is not Boaz in the threshing floor? Right? She would have never known that. If we didn't have the word guidance, Naomi became the word to her. She'd have missed it. She'd have missed it. That's exactly right. So she says, and he shall, watch this, and, and, and um, he, she says, uh, verse 3, Wash thyself. Wow. Wash thyself. Sanctify thyself today and tomorrow, remember? Right? Therefore, and anoint thee. Wow, you need to be baptized. You need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Anoint thyself. Ruth is telling Naomi this, correct? Ru Naomi is telling Ruth this. Okay. Naomi is giving Ruth instruction mm -hmm. about, you know, the barley harvest is now at the end, and she knows that Boaz is going to be in a threshing floor. That's the only night. Why is he in a threshing floor that night? Wow. Why does she know that Boaz would be in a threshing floor? Threshing wheat. That's, exa that's it. That's exactly right. Because they have been threshing for 49 days. They have all the barley that's right there at the threshing floor. And they don't want it to be stolen. So Boaz who's the kinsman's redeemer, and his servants that's with him, they all lay down that night at the threshing floor by the barley so nobody steals it. Right? So he becomes a protector, right, yeah. of the harvest. Right? And, you know, who knows that? Naomi knows that. Right? Wash thyself therefore and anoint thee and put thy raiment upon thee and get thee down to the floor but make not thyself known unto the man. Wow. Until he has done eating and drinking. That means after the supper. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark take note of the place where he lies down. Wow. Being being laid down on a threshing floor? You know the, the word thresh, the threshing floor, how did they thresh the wheat back then? Watch this. They put the barley and the wheat on a threshing floor, right? They take a board and they drill holes in a board all over and they put stones in a board and they connect it with a rope. Like you pull a tow rope on a ski, we ski with a, a knee board. Well, they got a mule that's got, you know, a, a, a harness coming back to them with a board with a rope connected to it. And on that board, they got holes drilled all over it. And then those holes are big rocks. They stick rocks all over it. And then someone will sit on it and then it goes around and around. And it's called the tribune. And it's where we get the word tribulation. Wow. Ooh, whoops, oh, 
Wow. So it's the time of, you know, uh, the beginning of this great tribulation, the great pressing out of the chaff and, you know, the separation time that he's there, that the bride comes to him. Amen. Oh, my God. Ooh, Amen. <laughs> that's good. And he says, uh, verse, verse. verse 4 in chapter 3, And it shall be, when he lieth down, that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet. Oh, my Lord. And lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. Man, let me tell you something. I can go crazy with this, word, with this piece right here. Come on. Come on, we hit it. Man, uncover his feet. The feet represent the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. So to pull it back is to reveal the gospel. Amen. Wow. The feet, repentance wow. and baptism. Remember? Mm. Sanctify thyself, wash thyself, anoint thyself. Right? As the Bible, how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel. Amen. How do we come to Jesus? On the threshing floor at his feet. Wow. Asking for a covering. The laver sure. had a laver in its foot. It's support. The heel, the feet, represent the support system. She was looking for support. She was looking for marriage. Security. She was looking for security. Yeah. So how do you go? You go to the feet in humility. The feet was the dirtiest part of the body, but if the feet's clean, the whole body's clean. Where does she go in humility? Where are we to go? We go to the feet. We come to the feet. If there's no feet, there's no support. That's right? right? That's right. The support system of a man is his help meet, right? And she's yeah. called his feet. His support system. That's why the enemy in the Garden of Eden went after Adam's help meet, his feet, his support system, and took it out. Yeah. And that's why the Bible says that you will bruise his heel, yes. but he'll crush your head back down to the feet. Yes. Right? Yes. It's all about the feet. Why feet? I ain't washing feet. I ain't touching feet. Because feet represent humility. Yes. It represents humility. When you could come from the throne in heaven and come all the way down to earth and wash a man's feet when you're the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh, all the way to the feet. When all the feet of the disciples that came in there were all dirty and Peter was the one that was supposed to wash them and he didn't. But they was arguing about who was going to be greatest in the kingdom and Jesus stood up and girded himself and grabbed the foot washing bowl. Yeah. and said, I'm going to show you how to be the greatest in the kingdom. Yeah. You get down at their feet. You must serve. Yeah. And that's why Ruth, the Moabitess, was called a maiden or a servant. That's why when uh, Isaac, when uh, the story with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, when Abraham was looking for a bride for Isaac, he sent his, he sent his, uh, the, the chief servant of his house, Eleazar, yes. to go get a bride. Eleazar means my God is help, is my, is my helper. That's why the, whole, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is our helper. The Holy Spirit is looking for a bride for the son, right? There were ten years in the famine and Eleazar took ten camels. Wow, to look for a bride. Where did he find a bride? He found Rachel where? At the well. Doing what? Serving. Not only, not only Eleazar pulling water for him, but let me fetch water for thy camels also. Yeah. Rebecca, I'm sorry. That's right, Rachel. I said Rachel. Rebecca. Loops of a rope. Loops in a rope. Wow. You know what Rebecca's name means? Loops of a rope. It means a support system. 
Wow. What did she do? What did she support? What did the loops and the ropes support? The veil. Wow. That was in the tabernacle. The loops of the rope supported the veil. What is the veil? The veil represents the flesh, represents Jesus Christ. Rebecca was the support system of Isaac, who was a picture of Jesus Christ, who got married at 40 years old during the wheat harvest. Ah. Jesus died at 33. Did he not? Seven year tribulation. Seven and 33 is 40. That's when Jesus will return for his bride. Mm. Hang that veil. Watch what he tells her now. <laughs> Watch this. Listen, and that's, listen, we become the support for Jesus Christ. That's why he says we are his hands and his feet in the earth. Gathering, going, gathering into his barn. Not into another man's barn. The feet. That's the problem with the wheat and the tear, right? God, you know, God sows the wheat, right? And the devil comes and sows the tear in the field. That's why I say, in a church, you're going to have wheat and tares. But you could pick out the wheat. It's real easy. As soon as the Spirit blows through the field, wheat is very bendable. It all lays down and bows itself. Right? Yes. And then when you look out, the servant's looking out over the field. He sees all these things sticking up like this. <laughs> the wind is the Ruach, is the Holy Spirit blowing over the people. And all those that are full of humility bow themselves and they go down. But all the prideful ones stand up. Oh, look at all the tears out there. So you know what? There's going to be a separating. The Bible says, do you know that the, the, the first, there's a gathering of the, and, and the gospel says there's a gathering of the, um, of the tares first. How is there a gathering of the tares? Really simple. The Holy Spirit's going to come. The wind's going to blow. All the wheat's going to lay down. And he's going to gather all the, the tares up like that. Yeah. See him easy then. And then once it pulls them up, the wind ceases and all the wheat come back wow. up. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Let the wind blow, Lord. And Boaz, verse 6, I'm going to go verse 6, and she went down into the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. You see, obedience is better than sacrifice. She listened to what her mother-in-law said and took notice to it. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. Wow! 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 He laid down at the end of it. At the end of the heap is when the bride comes. At the end of the heap. You understand? Yeah, at the feet. That's exactly right. And it says, listen, check this out. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. And it came to pass. Verse 8. Verse 8. Okay. For, that was verse 7. Okay. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid. Why was he afraid? Man, somebody pulled something off of him. In the middle of the night, he's sleeping. He don't think that some of them robbers are coming in about to pull his cover and kill him. Try to do something, right? At midnight. Wow. Doesn't that sound like another one at midnight? Matthew chapter 25. In the cult, Matthew 25. She went to him at midnight, remember? Matthew 25. And it says, you know, and the call went out at midnight, right? Remember that? I'm going to read it real quick. Do I have to read that one or y'all know? Y'all know. Mark. Y'all tired yet? I know you're tired. It says, uh, Matthew 25, he says, uh, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Are you serious? Wait, hold on a second. Eleazar had ten camels. Wow. There was in ten years of famine. Now we've got ten virgins. Man, it's just crazy. <laughs> it's just amazing. Just, God is amazing. <laughs> And it says, uh, then, uh, they, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth out to meet the bridegroom. 
and five of them were ready and all that. And it goes down and it says, let's see, uh, at verse 6, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. At midnight. At midnight. She went out to meet him at midnight. At midnight. Right? So the call went out at midnight, but it wasn't yet time for the marriage. This was just a, you know, a watch. All right. And he said, Who art thou? Verse 9. And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. You see, this right here, she knew the part. She understood from her mother-in-law what it is that she supposed that that near kinsman is supposed to do. How did she get that? Well, she got it from um, um, she got it from Genesis. Uh, I mean, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-five, verse five through ten. But let me tell you something. When she went there to him, and she pulled back his blanket from his feet and exposed the feet. He knew exactly what she was asking. And he could have said something to her. He could have said, pulled his covers back over his feet, I ain't doing nothing for you. You come in my field, you go in his field, you go in that field, and you want me to be your covering? Mm -hmm. Amen. But look what he says to her. Yeah. But she didn't go in them No, no, she didn't go. Meaning, when he, she pulled those, when she revealed his feet, if she would not been virtuous, he could have pulled those covers back over and said, I ain't covering you with nothing. That's right. This is, listen, this is our teacher to teach you and me how we are to live our life. Ruth is our example if you want to have a covering and be married. That's right. Do you want it to be well with you? Do you want to find rest? Yeah. Do you want to go on with no hope? Listen to what he says. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord. Verse 10, my daughter. And I'm going to end at 4. I'm going to go no further than that. And blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter. For thou hast showed more kindness. Oh. In the latter end. Than at the beginning. Inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, fear not. Wow, fear not, huh? Psalms 37, right? Fret not. Fear not. Fret not. Fear not. And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requirest. For all the city of my people, Bethlehem, doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman. How be it? There is a kinsman nearer than I. I want to go back up to verse 10. And he said, Blessed be thou, the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning. This is alluding to Number one, the beginning of her life, you know, her husband dies. And I'm going to end here. I'm going to end here. That's powerful. That's so powerful. Yeah. The beginning of her life, her husband dies. Now she's going to take care of her mother-in-law, right? But now she's, gonna, she's clinging to her mother-in-law and says, where you go, I'll go. And all of this is spread abroad in Israel. So she's now loves her mother-in-law. She's helping her. She's, you know, feeding her mother-in-law because of the embarrassment and all the things, you know, and a lot of things is in there. But he says, you showed more kindness in the latter end. You know why? Because, you see, Ruth is not seeking her own. Right. If Ruth was seeking her own, she would have went and married anybody and had children. She was seeking not only a covering for herself that would just be graced upon her, 
But when she uncovered his feet and was asking him to do the work of a near kinsman, whose name means, my God is King, mm. she was asking, let me be the one to raise up seed for Imlac. Let me be the mother for Naomi so her name won't be disregarded and thrown out. Grace me with putting your seed in me so that when my child is born, according to the law, when the firstborn son, you know, certain things had to be done, but it was to be all to God. <clears throat> Let me be the one and I won't even have him. I won't even name him. Just let me carry him so I can give him to my mother-in-law so that she can have a son. Wow. Man, it's not about us. We carry the seed for Jesus Christ to raise up to... Jesus is the one that died. Imlech had died. We carry seed to raise up a name for Him. Not for us. But you know what happens when you do that? When you lay your life down, then you fall under the blessing. Yeah. You're more blessed yeah. than you was. Mm. Amen. Yes. Mm, Lord Jesus. With that right there, Brother, showed more kindness in the latter than the beginning is the first beginning of coming to the Father than what we are today. The maturity that we become in the more that we take in of the Lord. The seed is the word, that's right. That begins to grow and grow and grow the maturity that you became in. Um, I'm going to read these fast to verse, uh, to verse 18 because we're going to pick up in 4. It says, uh, He said, Tarry this night, verse 13, and it shall be in the morning that uh, if he... Wait, let me go back up. And daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requires, for thou art in this for thy for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman, howbeit there is a nearer kinsman than I. Boy, wait till we get into that. <sighs> Tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning that if he will perform unto thee the part of the kinsman in the morning, this the morning is Pentecost. Wow. Yes. It's Pentecost. Well, let him do to thee the kinsman's part. But if he will not do the part of the kinsman to thee, then I will do the part of the kinsman to thee. As the Lord liveth, lie down unto morning. Let's stop right there. So we stopped. Don't forget, we stopped at verse 13. And next week we'll pick up from that. And, and uh, we'll conclude because... Man, this is going to go into some uh, pretty amazing stuff. It's all a picture of...